Congratulations, Mr. Brandeis. At 20 years old, you graduated from Harvard with the highest GPA any student has received for 322 years. You write an article so influential, it not only leads to new laws in 15 states, but creates an entirely new field of law. You were then appointed to the Supreme Court by President Woodrow Wilson, a close friend of yours, of course. It's been 50, no, 100, no, 125 days, and the Senate still hasn't confirmed your appointment? Well, Lewis, progressive politics aren't typical in Congress, but the Senate says this is about your character. After waiting four months, Lewis Brandeis was effectively put on trial before the Senate, where arguments for and against his character were made, and sentiments against him weren't just political. According to an LA Times article, a Boston politician called Brandeis a slimy fellow who'd use his smoothness, intrigue, and Jewish instinct to attain power. Even though Brandeis was clearly qualified to be a Supreme Court justice, Brandeis was judged for his Jewish heritage. I find this anti-Semitic criticism of Brandeis so significant because he had no personal tether to the religious practice of Judaism. To Brandeis's critics, how Brandeis felt simply didn't matter compared to what he was. A Jew. I think it's important to recognize that the sense of otherness directed at Jews still exists today. Even with the rise of secular Judaism, the idea of the Jew is still based on classic anti-Semitic stereotypes. And Brandeis has experienced a good example of that. So, whether you are a very religious Jew, or a more secular Jew like Brandeis, or even not Jewish at all, I really encourage you to learn about the 3,000 years of rich culture Judaism holds, because there's no conflict in being who you are today and exploring where you came from. In 1916, Louis Brandeis became the first Jewish American Associate Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court. <laughs>